Have you ever felt lost or stuck in life and you don't know where you're going? You're not sure of your purpose, you're not sure of what you're meant to do next. You're not alone. We've all been there where we feel like we're aimlessly walking around, wandering around in life without a real clear direction. We don't know where we are sometimes. We don't know where we want to get to. We don't know how to get there either. But if I told you there's a proven way to find your unique path and achieve your highest potential. And in this video, I'm going to share with you four powerful lessons by Robert Greene, Dr. Joseph Murphy. These lessons aren't just abstract ideas. They're practical steps that you can take and implement and they will help you break free from all that confusion and limitations holding you back so that you can live in a way that means something to you, no matter what your current situation is. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of who you are and where you're meant to be and who you're meant to be and what you're meant to do. When I felt lost after a toxic relationship, I literally fell out of love with my corporate role as well. I didn't read just about trying to find solutions. I tried countless methods. I attended loads of seminars. I tried all these quick healing techniques. I read books and books around purpose and everything left me nowhere. <laughs> I felt more lost because I was like, it's not working for me. But the lessons I'm sharing today, they were a turning point for me. They helped me realize my own strength, my own passions, and they helped me start my business. That's helped me build meaningful relationships and really do something that I feel means something to me. These methods are tried and tested and they grounded historical teachings, spiritual teachings, and modern psychology as well. So stick around. I'm going to share those four lessons and each one builds on the last that you won't hear elsewhere. They're simple but profound and you can implement them with ease. So make sure you stay till the end as well because the final lesson is the most transformative and often overlooked. So lesson number one, we've got to understand your unfair advantage. The way we understand the unfair advantage is we have to go back in time to your childhood. What did you love doing as a child? Those activities will tell you what your true purpose is. Imagine that you're in this role or you're told every day by somebody in a relationship that you're not good enough. You're going to be drained by the end of the day. Nothing is giving to you. You might want to work harder, graft more. But if you've ignored your childhood passions, then you won't know what makes you valuable. You won't know your own value. So how will anyone else know it? We can't get validation from somebody else. So I'll give you an example. I grew up as an Asian family. I was pushed down a specific roadmap. I was given a, like, if you like, a map of life, you know, work hard, study hard, um, get a job, have children, get a house, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know, get into a good relationship. But it all fell apart. As soon as I was in a toxic relationship, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know where I am. I don't know what I'm doing. This map hasn't worked for me. It's not working. I'm lost. And you might not see the importance of that right now in terms of you have to find what you're good at. If you're in survival mode, you might be just like, I've just got to live for tomorrow. Think about what is it that you were really good at as a child. Start to explore that because it will be a game changer for you. It will literally change your life and it's not going to be dependent on anyone else. Because the truth of the matter is, Sometimes we don't even get started and somebody keeps knocking us down, telling us we're not good enough for what we want to be or who we are. So it's important for you to know what your values are first. And it's that way that we can find meaning. We can find meaning in relationships. We can find meaning in our career. So what can you do right now? Some easy actions. Write down three activities that you used to enjoy when you were a child and then really keep brainstorming for the next seven days. Just seven days. Keep thinking about what else did I enjoy? Just get curious. What did I, what did I enjoy and how can I integrate that in my life currently so that you can bring some of that joy back into your life again? Also, something I really want to ask you, what are you affirming that is keeping you lost? What are you saying to yourself? Like you might be saying, I am lazy or I am not good enough or 
I am procrastinating or I am, there might be something that you're saying, saying like, I'm not valuable, I'm not worthy or my needs don't matter. What are you saying about yourself to yourself? This is so important. And this is where I want to take Dr. Joseph Murphy's teachings. He goes back and looks at, you know, Moses and, you know, the burning bush and says that the power of what we say to ourselves, like, I am tired, literally is so powerful that it changes the course of our life. If we keep telling ourselves that I am lost, I am stuck, I don't know what I want, or I don't know, you won't know. But if you can just turn that around and just say, I know that this saying, whatever it is that you're saying, is keeping me stuck, then we can shift it and change it and help you get clearer. So maybe start telling yourself, I am clear about where I want to go and who I am and what I am here to do and what value I bring into the world. Something along those lines. You know, I'm clear on that. I am worth it. Those kind of things are really important. Lesson number two, we have to realize our limits. This is so important because when we can understand not only what our strengths are, but also our limits, we can actually accept them and then we don't give power to it. Let me explain. Look, every single superhero has some limits like kryptonite for Superman you too will have things that you're not very good at. You know, for instance, I talked to my son about this and he's always like, mom, you know, what do I need math for? You know, it's not like as long as I can add and subtract my money in life, I'll be okay. So I know he's never going to be a professor of maths, but I know he's really good at other stuff. So it's not about hammering home what you're not good at. It's about really getting clear on what you are good at. And when we can be really clear about what we're not good at and what our limits are, and we can accept those really understandingly and being without judgment, we don't give power to it. We don't start going, oh, I'm not good enough because kryptonite has this impact on me. And that means nobody else can use that against you either. There's lots of people that will mock you and find fault in you no matter what, but there's limits within each of us and it's okay to have those limits. We wanna accept those and really allow that so that nobody has control over us. And we're not gonna focus on what doesn't work, what are our limits, we're gonna focus on what is amazing about you. What can you do right now? What actionable steps can you take? We wanna list your strengths, but we also want to list what your limitations are or what you're not interested in. My son's not interested in maths. What are you not interested in? What doesn't, what are you not even wanting to invest your time and effort in? It's okay, you don't have to. Identify also how someone or something is making you feel less than because of your limitations, okay? It might be that you've got ADHD or dyslexia, You know your limitations. It's important to know that. But you also have a superpower as well. So it's really knowing, okay, how can I focus on my superpower, which is to hyper-focus rather than what my limitation is. So write down how someone has been using fear or the fear of what you're not good at against you so you feel bad about yourself. Write it down. What is it that you're most fearful of someone knowing about you? Write it down and then flip it and go, okay, I have this fear, but fear is when we disconnect to the kingdom of heaven within or the God within or the power within you. What we want to do is connect to the power within you, which is your unique skills, which is your your superpower. That's what you need to connect with. Don't worry about what you're not good at. So fear is a disconnection from your divine truth. We don't want to disconnect from our divine truth. So tell yourself on a regular basis, I'm good at this. I'm good at this. Whatever it is that you're good at. And don't worry about what you're not good at. And you're capable and worthy of focusing on your strength. Lesson number three, we want to commit to mastery. Now, before you switch off, please, if you're feeling lost, it's likely you have some trauma. 
okay? And when you have trauma, you there might be some motivational issues or procrastination that comes up in life. And sometimes when people say, you have to, you know, master something, you have to put in the hours and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes we can, if we've got that trauma, we can, it can put us off and think, no, I can't, I can't do this. I, I don't have the energy to do it. Yeah, I understand that. Mastery isn't about talent though. It's not about grafting. It's really about tapping into what gives you energy rather than what takes energy away from you. It's not what you're, it's not about focusing on what you're not good at or what other people tell you need to be good at. It's about consistently practicing something that helps you feel better about yourself and gives you energy. So it's without putting pressure on yourself. So it's really about spending maybe 10 minutes just doing a little bit so that you can build momentum. You've got to build momentum for this. It's like when you're learning how to dance, for instance, say if you really enjoy dance, yeah, and you want to learn to dance because it, it will give you energy. It's that feeling from dancing with somebody and connecting with someone and feeling the music. If you enjoy it, just taking even one step towards that, it could be a five minute dance in the morning. It will create momentum for you to create something else. I'll give you an example. When I first, I, I used to be a chatterbox when I was a youngster. So when I started going through this process, I decided I wanted to find my voice again. From being in a toxic relationship, I really lost my confidence in a big way. I, I I lost it all. So because what happens is our brain changes. So so the thing that I did is I started a podcast. I just wanted to practice using my voice. And actually, I really started to realize I'm enjoying it. I just enjoy talking. <laughs> but if you have trauma, you might have a block in the brain. Okay, we have to acknowledge that. So if you're finding it difficult doing this, then do look in the description, have a look at my free masterclass, learn more about what happens in the brain, unblock your brain so you can fulfill your potential. There's so many people that live with trauma but don't realize there's a way around it. You can heal this and actually allow yourself to enjoy life once more. So what can you do today? Please just spend 10 minutes a day doing something that brings you joy, that aligns with your purpose, that aligns with what it is that you would like to master that brings you joy. It might be a new skill. It's something that you love though. And affirm that you are worthy of having a happy and loving life. You're worth it, okay? You're worth having fun in your life to enjoy your life. Okay, let's look at lesson number four. We have to use adversity to serve others. Now, it might not, to serving others might not be in the way that you think it has to be. Maybe you've given so much, you were your people pleaser, you've given to everyone else and that's why you feel lost because you don't even know who you are anymore because you're just giving yourself to everybody. Every opportunity that is happening in your life right now is for you. It's so that you can become the person that you're meant to become. Everything, every pain, no matter what you're going through right now, and it might be awful, but this situation isn't to break you, it's to make you. Who are you going to become? If you quit, you're literally not going to become the person that you're meant to become. You can't quit. You have to allow yourself to get the, the juice out of this situation and allow yourself to move forward because it could become the greatest strength for you. Look, sometimes the very thing that you need to give back or, or create, you know, contribute to others might not be in the way that you think it might be. It might be like you have to heal yourself so you can meet your future soulmate. It could be that you're meant to heal yourself so that you can start a business or write a book. It could be, you see, it's not about you just giving yourself to others. There's also an element of you get so much from it. You get that loving relationship. You get that intimacy. You get that connection. You get that career from enjoying what you do. You get 
what it is. So it's it's not just about giving and contributing and serving to others. You are actually serving yourself at the same time as well. The other beautiful thing is sometimes you don't even have to do anything for others. Just you healing yourself, just you overcoming that obstacle is you are a role model for somebody else. Someone who is going through exactly what you're going through, feeling just as lost as you are, you will become someone's watching you. There's someone out there who is going through exactly the same thing you're going through and you healing or getting over this obstacle is making it possible for someone else to heal too. So you're a role model. Don't just live with it, heal it, move forward from it, overcome it, transform it. It's incredible what you'll do from doing that. I want to share something in Dr. Joseph Murphy's um, lectures in one of his books. He talks about a 65-year-old woman who really took on board what, what, in what he was saying in one of the lectures, which is, you know, use the I am carefully. She was 65, she was a widower, and she really wanted to meet someone and have a loving relationship. She was feeling lonely. So she decided to keep repeating something. I am in a loving relationship. I have met a spiritual man. I am safe and secure. I am happy. I am wanted. She kept saying that quietly and with so much feeling behind it. And three weeks later, she met her man. You can change no matter what situation you're in, but you need to be able to feel what it is that you want to become. You need to feel worthy of what it is that you want. Sometimes it's the trauma that is holding you back. It doesn't mean that it's not possible for you. It just means you need to release the trauma so you can feel worthy of it. You can feel what it would feel like if you had what you wanted. And then you can manifest that or bring that into your life and have a life that gives you purpose and meaning to wake up every day. So what you can do right now is have a look at where you are. Can you feel that feeling? If you can't, then you might need some trauma support. So have a look into getting some trauma therapy so that you can move through this blog. Don't just live with it. Your life is worth so much more. The other thing you could do is write an actionable thing. What is it that you want? What do you want to feel like? What would give you meaning in your life? The feeling. It doesn't have to be a clear map, but what feeling do you want? Do you want to feel happy? Do you want to feel purposeful? Do you want to feel like you're making a difference in people's lives? What is it that you want? And then write an affirmation and repeat it to yourself over and over again with feeling. And I want you to really reflect on what is it that you need to do to get to that, to feel worthy of having what you want if you feel you don't feel worthy of it? So there you have it. You have four lessons that you can do. I know you can. And you can achieve your unique purpose and really make a difference in the world. These are the teachings of Robert Greene and Dr. Joseph Murphy. Remember, this journey is process. It's not perfection. You don't have to be perfect for anyone or anything. This is about you enjoying your life in that process, in the journey of finding you. If you found any of these tips helpful, please like, subscribe, share for more insights on personal growth and achieving your true potential. I want to send you so much love. And I also ask that you send a prayer to anybody that is feeling lost right now. If you do this, someone else will do it for you as well. So until next time, sending you so much love.